Well, let's stand before the Lord in prayer before we get into the messages. Yes, our God and our Father, fill our hearts and fill our homes with your glory, dear God. We know that if you will do the one, you will do the other. It will be there, God. We thank you for that. Thank you for this precious song, these poems, Lord, that were shared with us. Thank you for speaking to our hearts through them, Lord. Now, God, we pray, yes, send forth your light, Lord, into our hearts. Oh, Father, we know you love our children way more than we can even know and understand, God. But we pray that you will continue to show us how much you love them. Show us how we can love them like you do. Do that, Lord, tonight. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Okay, as I said this morning, this evening, we are going to turn a corner in our teaching emphasis and move out of the visionary aspects and into the practical ones. Tomorrow evening will be very practical. But this evening, I feel the Lord would have us to cover a very important heart issue that, yes, is very practical, but yet it's a heart issue. It's not nuts and bolts. It's not how to do this, how to do that. It's a heart issue. And so this evening, this first message is the key to obedience is blessings. John tells us in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Although John is referring to God and our relationship with God, nothing is more true in a parent-child relationship than that verse right there. We love him because he first loved us. And that's the way it is with our children. They love us because we first loved them. This title holds the most profound wisdom that you will ever glean in child training. It is the fountain from which everything else flows. If you don't get this, it's not going to go very well for you in the rest of the time. Blessings is the fountain from which everything else in child training flows. I chose to use the word blessing because I'm afraid the word love has become a generic word. It has been watered down. And hey, everyone says they love their children. So I've chosen to use a different word. The word blessings. The picture of the word blessings is very revealing. If you study the word in the Bible, in the old and the new, in the Hebrew and the Greek, this is the picture that you get when you study the word blessing. It's a picture of overflowing. It's a picture of outpouring, giving, benefit, gifts, love and acceptance, favor, words of prosperity. These are what we get When we look at the word blessing. And by the way, God who is our father is obsessed with blessing us. It is part of the father's nature to outflow blessings upon his children. Think about the Beatitudes. You know where it says blessed there several times. Consider it in light of our children. To be blessed is to be happy to be envied, to be spiritually prosperous, to be filled with life and joy and satisfaction in God's favor, regardless of your outward circumstances. Now let me give it to you again. To be happy, to be envied, to be spiritually prosperous in your home, filled with life and joy and satisfaction underneath your father and your mother's favor, regardless of the outward circumstances. That's how God blesses you, isn't it? 
I'm glad God blesses me that way. I need that kind of blessing as I stumble my way through life at times. I'm glad he blesses me that way. And of course, we look at the word blessings in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we get a picture of a people who are being overflowed and outpoured by God with blessings on every hand. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be when you rise up in the morning, and blessed shalt thou be when you go to bed at night. Blessed shalt thou be when you sit in your house, and blessed shalt thou be when you go out to do your chores in your field. Oh, Lord, let us get a grasp of that concerning our own children, that our own children would feel such a blessing upon their life that they could say, Blessed am I when I get up in the morning, and blessed am I when I lay down at night, blessed am I when I sit at my father's table, and blessed am I when I go out to do the chores in the morning. Oh, my life is blessed on every hand by my father and mother's blessings upon me. Brothers and sisters, there is a danger, a grave danger of passing over the aspects of love and blessings and relationships and quickly going on to correction and spanking and standards of holiness. I believe this is a grave mistake. In fact, if you came to these meetings with your pen in your hand, ready to write down all the little lists of all the little how-tos and how to do that and how to do this, you miss the whole reason for these meetings. It's deeper than that. It's much deeper than that. Now that's part of it, but it's much deeper than that. I have been intrigued many times by human behavior concerning The tapes on the home. People will get a set of these tapes, you know, and there's 12 tapes in there, and they open up the jacket, and they look it over, and they look at all the names, and they come to this one over here, I think it's on this side, called the Rod of Discipline. They reach into the middle of the set, and pull it out of the middle, and put it in their tape player, and listen to it first, and immediately they think, this is the answer. I've just found the answer to all the woes in my home. Oh, that hurts me, brothers and sisters. That hurts me. You know, I didn't understand that at first, why that is done. But it grieves me when people do that. I used to wonder why, but I don't anymore. They think that spanking their children will be the cure-all for all of their family woes. And guess what? They are dead wrong. The law is love, brothers and sisters. Jesus said it so beautifully in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 39. He said to the Pharisees there, these two beautiful statements, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he told them, upon these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. These words apply to everything that I will say in all of these sessions. Everything can be traced back to love and should flow out of love. Everything can be traced back to the same thing. Everything we've been talking about, everything we will talk about, every one of the how-tos, every detail of it can all be traced back to Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And by the way, your children are your closest neighbors. Amen. They are your closest neighbors. Paul said it this way. Though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. That was what was wrong with the Pharisees, you know. They did all the right things, but not out of love. We can neglect the weightier matters of the law as they did and only pass on a religion to our children. We can set out neglecting the weightier matters of the law and jump in with all these how-tos and make things so heavy in our houses that our children will not prosper under it. The law is love, brothers and sisters. Make sure whatever you do, whatever you do, that it be showered with love. 
because the law is love. Let me share a sad revelation with you. Years ago, when the tapes on the home were just beginning to circulate, and people were asking for them, and we were just beginning to realize it seemed like God is going to use these tapes, and they started going out. I received many troubling phone calls in those days. The people would say on the telephone, Brother Denny, your teachings on discipline do not work. Oh, they don't work. My child does not respond like you described on your tape. You said they would be my friend. They're not my friend when I get done spanking them. They want to run away from me. It doesn't work. Well, I must admit, when those calls started coming, I wasn't sure what to say. I was puzzled in those early days. I thought, Lord, what's wrong? They're giving me a true story. They're telling me that things aren't going well. They're giving me these woes of the circumstances and the responses of their children when they give them a spanking. What's wrong? I took this question to the Lord and I began searching the word of God for answers. And one day in my meditations, the answer came to me from the Lord. God said, the difference is love. I realized we spanked our children in the midst of a loving relationship. We loved our children. We were close to them. They were close to us. And we spanked our children and we got beautiful results out of it. So I just got up and told everybody, hey, spank your children. This is what happened. But God said, the difference is love. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to test that. And then the phone just kept on ringing. So the same questions came on the telephone and they said, we don't know what to do. Your teachings on spanking don't work. So I thought, okay, I'm going to test this now. And I asked them, dear parent, one question I want to ask you. Do you have a close, loving, flowing relationship with your child? Silence. No. The answer was always the same. No. Aha. And I realized right there that there was a bit of a blind spot in the teaching. And that's why two or three years after those home tapes were preached, we put this tape in there in the back of it. Blessings, the key to obedience. To try to put the right balance in there on the whole idea and attitude of spanking. God's burden is for relationships. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 6 describes that very clearly. The burden that God has as he speaks about the children in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 6 and the fathers. The burden of God there is relationships. That's what God wants. And out of that relationship, yes, there are many things that we must do. But it must come out of a relationship. And I found that these people did not have that relationship. There was a distance between them. For who knows what the reasons are. There could be many different reasons. But they were there. And so when they picked up the rod to set their child straight, it just put a bigger wall between the two of them than was there already. And that may scare you a bit, but that's all right. It's good to get sobered up sometimes. Maybe that's the kind of results you're getting. God is concerned about the flow of love between father and his children and children and their father. This flow of love is the foundation of all successful child training. Remember the first love relationship we talked about? That thing is supposed to just continue to grow. And as it continues to grow, there is a flow of love that goes back and forth. You know? Oh, Papa, you are the best Papa in the whole wide world. You know? My Papa's stronger than your Papa. My Papa can do more than your Papa can do. Why, if you knew how smart my Papa was, you wouldn't say that. My Papa's the smartest daddy in the whole church. That's a little child talking about his father. Amen? And the glory of children is their father. It's supposed to be that way. That flow back and forth. Father and child. Child and father. And out of that relationship, all these other things fit together very beautifully. But if you don't have that one, you may get some benefit out of it, but you need that first. First things first. Amen? Amen. 
This first love relationship is supposed to be the foundation stone of a lifelong relationship of love. And if this relationship is lost through neglect or ignorance, problems arise early in the development of the children. And I'm sure.